Good morning, 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 everybody. I hope everybody's day is off to a great start. I'm thankful to be in the land of the living this morning. I'm thankful to be amongst the living this morning. I'm thankful that God woke me up this morning and gave me another chance. So for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm Grace Amber. I come on different platforms whenever God gives me a word to share. I come on and I share it with you. So really quick this morning, happy Tuesday. I want to talk to you really, really quick this morning from the topic of the affairs of the righteous, the affairs of the righteous. What am I talking about today? Let's jump in. You often hear me um, talking about offense. And why do I talk about offense so much? Why am I always talking about how to handle offense? Why Satan likes to use offense? Why is because I understand, and Satan, more importantly, Satan understands the importance of being in right standing with God and in, in being in right standing with his kingdom, right? And so Satan understands that if he can get you out of right standing with God and the kingdom of God, now he has you without many of the things that you need to maintain safety in this world, right? So you hear me talk about offense a lot. And when Satan uses the tactic of offense, it is strategically designed to either get you to self-destruct or to get you to do something that will get you out of right standing with God. Now, am I going to sit here and tell you that righteous living is easy? Absolutely not. Because it is a struggle for us all. Why? Because we have this flesh. And so when we get offended or when things go wrong or when things happen, our flesh wants us to get up and cut up, essentially. Our flesh wants us to act ungodly. And in doing so, there are serious ramifications of that. So well, today I want to talk to you about the affairs from the topic of the affairs of the righteous. And why am I talking about that today? Because there are significant benefits that come with righteous living. Again, it's not easy to live a righteous lifestyle, but there are some essential benefits and vital benefits that come along with living a righteous lifestyle. What is righteousness? Righteousness is not a decision that we make that one day we're going to wake up and say, I'm going to be righteous. And then we go do whatever we want to do. No, this is a lifestyle thing. Righteousness is a lifestyle. This is not something a one and done that you do today. You handle uh, when somebody offends you, you handle this one situation correctly, and then you go back to your old ways of cussing folks out and jumping on people and fighting. No, righteousness is a lifestyle. And though we may fall short, we get back up again, right? And try this thing again, because this is a lifestyle. This is a way of life. This is not just a one-time decision. This is not just something that can be displayed in one circumstance. Our goal is righteous lifestyle. Righteousness as a lifestyle. Our goal is a righteous lifestyle, because again, we understand that there are benefits that come along with living a righteous lifestyle. Today, I talked to you. I want to talk to you. I told you from the topic of the affairs of the righteous. Turn with me in your Bible, right? Turn with me to Psalm 34, and I'm going to start Psalm 34. I'm going to start verse 11. Psalm 34, go down to verse 11. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lip from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil to blot out their name from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. I want to go back and dissect this a little bit. Because what the scripture is telling you is how a righteous lifestyle benefits you and your affairs, right? It's talking about that. So let's spin this thing back and go through it just a little bit this morning. Let's go back to 
Uh, let's start from the 13th verse. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. And this is something that is very difficult for us to do sometimes, right? Because I've said this before, even in your telling the truth, your truth, right, may also have an evil effect. What do I mean? So if your coworker doesn't know what they're doing, right, and somebody comes and asks you, so what's up with, with Sally over there uh, who works over there in that department with you? What's going on with her? Because she seems to be lost. There you have an opportunity to, to tell the truth. The problem is... The truth is really slandering Sally. And so the scripture is telling you to keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. So you wouldn't be telling a lie to say, listen, Sally don't know what the heck she's doing. She's over there. She's jacking up stuff. She's breaking the machinery. She's breaking the equipment. She's messing up documentation. She's messing up paperwork. She can't even clock in right. Well, you're telling the truth. But guess what? And telling the truth. You are also slandering somebody and it ha may have an evil effect on that person. So as we talk about this scripture and as we dissect this, the scripture is telling you, explaining to you what a righteous lifestyle looks like. One thing it says is that a righteous lifestyle consists of keeping your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Here's what I have found. When people have come to me and asked me something about somebody and if the truth will be hurtful, even if I don't tell the truth right then, as much as it burns me up to not tell the truth, right? If I just bite my tongue, don't say anything ugly, don't really tell the truth, just don't say nothing at all. Because the truth would really be slandering somebody. If I don't say it, it's only a matter of time before the truth comes out anyway. And so part of this righteous lifestyle is remembering that our words have power. And so we have to be mindful that when we open our mouths, what did they teach us in school? If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Trust me, you ain't the only truth bearer. If somebody is doing wrong, it's only a matter of time before the truth comes out. Just, it doesn't necessarily have to come out through you. Let's keep going. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Turn from evil and do good. And this is what many of us as children of God struggle with, especially when we are offended because we have, our flesh tells us, don't allow somebody to do that to you. You go, you go teach them a lesson so that they know not to do this to you again, right? But that is evil and that is not good. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. So when somebody offends us, a righteous lifestyle consists of turning from evil and doing good, which is extremely hard. You hear me talk about this. This is my area of improvement that I need improvement on, right? This is my area of deficit that I could definitely use some improvement on because it's easy to snap right back at somebody, right? Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't say seek peace and pursue it when the other person is being nice or when everybody else is being nice to you. It didn't give you stipulations. It says seek peace and pursue it. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. That is a righteous lifestyle. Oh my Lord, look at my birthday balloon. Let's keep going. Uh, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. Now, this is what I'm talking about today. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. I told you I wanted to talk to you from a topic of the affairs of the righteous because when we are going through things, right? We want to know and we want to be reassured that God has his eyes on us and that if we respond in a righteous way, God will make sure that he writes anything that is wrong. But guess what the scripture is telling you? The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. So the affairs of the righteous gets the attention of God. So the benefit of a righteous lifestyle is, is that, hey, I might go through something and somebody might have wronged me and I took the high road. I turned from evil. I did good. I sought peace and I pursued it even when I had a... a even when I legitimately had a reason and a right and a motive to respond in an ugly manner or an unrighteous manner, instead I took the high road. As a result of this righteous lifestyle, God's attention, his eyes are on the affairs of the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. But 
The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, those who live an unrighteous lifestyle. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to blot out their name from the earth. You want God to be attentive to your affairs, but guess what? In order for God to be attentive to your affairs, according to this scripture, you have to be living a righteous lifestyle, which means that even if you have a reason to respond in an unrighteous way, make sure that you turn from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. Make sure that you keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Let's keep going to the 17th verse. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them, not the unrighteous, but the righteous. The Lord hears them and he delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones and not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked, AKA the unrighteous, right? The foes, which is the enemies of the righteous, will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. What am I trying to tell you today to sum it up? What I'm trying to tell you is it doesn't always feel good when we live in a righteous manner. A righteous lifestyle doesn't always feel good because let's be honest, when somebody does wrong to us, it doesn't feel good when we respond with good. What makes us feel good, the instant instant gratification comes from going on ahead, taking matters into our own hands and putting them in their place and giving them what they deserve. The problem is, is that we want God to be attentive to our affairs. We want God to hear our cry. We want God to vindicate us. We want God to take vengeance into his own hands because if we let him do it, he can do it in a way that we could never do it, right? Because he has the whole world in his hands. The earth is the Lord and everything in it, right? But here's the deal. We have to live a righteous lifestyle if we really want God to be attentive to our affairs we have to do something on our part and we have to stay in right standing. My word for you today is that God sees you in your righteous lifestyle and he sees the things that are going on around you, pertaining to you and happening to you. But what he calls you to do is to live a righteous lifestyle and God will have his eyes and his ears on the affairs of the righteous. You don't need to worry about how it's going to be handled. You don't need to worry about how it's going to be straightened out. You don't need to worry about if the wrong is going to be made right. You don't have to worry about taking matters into your own hands. God sees how your mama treats you, your daddy treats you, grandma treats you, your foster mama, your neighbors, your co-workers, your supervisors, the woman at the corner store that you keep going to. God sees how you are being treated, your baby daddy, your baby mama, your ex-husband, your ex-wife. God sees it all. He sees it all the way down to the creditor and the way that the creditor is treating you. God sees it all. Your call is to remain in right standing and to live a righteous lifestyle. And if you will live a righteous lifestyle, you don't have to worry about how the situation is going to be handled. All you got to do is worry about being in right standing because if you will live a righteous lifestyle, the scripture tells you that God has his eyes and his ears on the affairs of the righteous. And you can rest assured that God is going to make sure that everything is straightened out in this proper and appointed time. I love you. I'm Grace Amber. I hope that word blessed you. Happy Tuesday. I'll be right back on tomorrow with another word. Good Lord willing.